You are tuned in to Faith City Outreach with Marina Maria, the founder of Global Gospel Worship Radio. Marina interviews local pastors and global leaders, sharing their testimonies and the work they're doing for the Lord. In Matthew 6.33, Jesus reminds us, Seek first God's kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. We hope this program will encourage you to do just that. Now here's your host, Marina Maria. Welcome to Faith City Outreach. This is Marina Maria with today's special guest, who plays an active part of the Republican Party, Anthony Kern, who is a conservative, pro-family, firmly upholds the United States Constitution, and works diligently to promote individual liberty and freedom. He has been an Arizonan for 30 plus years. He is also a husband and a father, a community leader, law enforcement officer, and an active church member. Anthony Kern was born in Minnesota. Kern was elected to serve as the representative for Arizona House of Representatives District 20 in 2015 through 2021 and is running for election on November 8th, 2022 to the Arizona State Senate to represent District 27th. Thank you, Anthony, for being on Faith City Outreach to share your testimony and to share how the Lord is using you now in the field of politics. I know you've been in the politics for some time now, but uh, we want to know how he's going to be using you now um, once you get reelected. Yeah, thank you, Marina, for having me on today. A great Arizona day. It's going to be in the low 90s, so we're, we're happy. I'm actually working outside right now. And I uh, just want to say thank you for allowing me to be on this radio show. Um, yeah, I've been in politics since 2015. I first ran in 2014, won the 2014 uh, general election and uh, lost my seat in 2020. And uh, so in 2021, it was my, that was my last day, the second Monday in January 2021. And then uh, just looking at the landscape of everything, I thought, you know, this is where God has me. I'm going to go ahead and throw my hat in the ring for the state Senate. And he's really just kind of been open do- opening doors since then. Uh, as you know, Trump has endorsed me actually twice. Uh, in July of 2021, he mentioned my name. Um, and then in November 2021, he, uh, he, he came out with a full endorsement of my state Senate campaign. That's great. Uh, I will be asking you about that endorsement a little yeah. later, but I'm so interested, and I know a lot of people are too, are um, interested in knowing about your testimony. We never really get a chance to know about the testimony of Christian politicians. So please share your testimony, Anthony. Thank you, Marina. Yeah, yeah. So I gave my life to Jesus Christ at 21 years old, and uh, I, I have 13 brothers and sisters, same mom and dad. And back in the 70s, my dad gave his life to Christ, um, but then he backslid and, and, uh, and he had a problem with, uh, with drinking. And my, my mom eventually, she gave her life to Christ on an Easter Sunday in April back in the mid-70s. And I was kind of the rebel teenager. I um, you know, didn't really want a lot to do with Christ. Uh, I moved to Arizona through just kind of a whim. A friend of mine said, hey, let's go to Arizona. I said, sure, why not? I graduated from high school and came here and lived here ever since. Uh, but my roots were, you know, my roots were Catholic. And then when my parents, both of them ended up getting saved, then uh, they were very strong Christians. And I ended up giving my life to Christ when I flew back home one time in my mom and dad's living room. They had a Bible study, preached on Joseph and his brothers. And, uh, and I could relate to that. And you know, I, I just sold out. Uh, I never looked back. I, you know, joined a church down here called the Door Christian Center, was there for 27 years. Um, they did a lot of evangelical preaching, a lot of door knocking, a lot of uh, just really, you know, everything they did was to win souls. And so it kind of prepared me for the political world, actually. And uh, so I knock on doors, you know, I'm not afraid to talk to people. Um, but yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, is is the center of my life he is the he is my all in all i mean we're going to stand before him one day it doesn't matter what title we have what matters is what we do with the doors he has opened here on this earth and in that sphere i i know it's in the political world that that is my lane and my metron that god has me in 
So would you say that was the time when the Lord led you to serve him in the field of politics? Um, well, my dad was in, was very political growing up. And like I said, we had a wood stove. I mean, again, 13 brothers and sisters, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. My mom was a cook in a local restaurant. We grew up in a small town of about 4,000 people. My dad was a truck driver. Um, my dad got radically saved. And again, like I said, he backslid, but his, uh, his, 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 does he was really very much into politics in the 60s and 70s? Uh, he was the young Republicans, Minnesota State young Republican back in the 60s. And I kind of mm-hmm. just grew up. I mean, I remember standing outside of, uh, of stores in, in our little hometown with uh, sandwich board signs as, as probably, I was probably 10 years old campaigning for what my dad believed in. And he was, uh, he was a very strong conservative, he believed in Jesus Christ believe that, uh, you know, you need to mix both of them. Um, you know, you need to bring God into politics. And, uh, and so my dad was really the main catalyst for me getting in politics. Um, but, but, but yeah, I mean, this is right where God has me. I firmly believe that my pastors believe that my church believes that. And, uh, actually God needs righteous men and women to rise up, not be afraid of the enemy, not be afraid of the media Mm -hmm. and proclaim his gospel. You know, our foundation was Jesus Christ. So why, why should we be afraid? Why would we we be afraid of the enemy out there when our foundation is so great? Amen. What are the challenges of being a Christian politician? I think you named a couple of, uh, of let's say areas in the community, like the media. How do you confront the criticism? Well, thanks uh, Marina for that question. You know, we have the truth. Mm -hmm. I don't care what they say. I don't mm-hmm. care what they call me. They can call mm-hmm. me any name they want. We have the truth, truth, which is the word of God. And mm-hmm. yeah, it gets heavy sometimes. It gets, uh, you know, you you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. principalities. It gets heavy sometimes because you're pressing in, you're pressing in areas that that are evil, that are dark. Um, so you know, but 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 I know that my God is with me. I know my church is with me. I know that people pray for me. I have a prayer covering. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and this is where God has me. So, you know, uh, you know, Jesus battled a few battles in his day with the religious people and, uh, you know, being in politics as a Christian, a true Christian. Now, a lot of people say they're Christian just to get to the next level, but you know, I'm not, I'm not that person. I, I know, um, I'm not using God for my, you know, next political challenge. Uh, mm-hmm. God is using me. In, in, in because that's my heart's desire is to change this state, this nation, using His word and and what He what He has created me to be, and just standing in it. So the media, you know, you've got your fellow politicians that you know want you to kind of be a little more soft on certain issues. Um, you've got your definitely the Democrat part, uh, you know, you know, um, but but people respect somebody that stands for truth and righteousness and the word of God. It, the people respect that when you're not playing the game uh, and you are, you are true to what you believe in. They respect that when the media comes after you. I mean, they did one time a couple of years ago towards me, just, it was pretty, pretty heavy. I had people text me and tell me, I am so sorry that you're going through this. I know you're not the, the person that they're making you out to be. And these are just people out of nowhere. These are lobbyists. And so your testimony goes before you if you're true to the word of God and, 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 and stay in the lane that God has put you in. That is so true. And that is so wise of you to have a covering that your church is covering you and your pastors. Can you name the uh, church that you attend again? Absolutely. Absolutely. Fresh Start Church. Fresh Start Peoria, Church right now. Welcome. Yeah, I just want to thank the pastors of Frank Fresh uh, Start Amen. Church here. Yes. Thank you so much. What are their names? Uh, pastors Paul and Kim Owens. Pastor Paul and Kim Owens, thank you so much for yes. covering yes. Anthony Kern in his work um, that the Lord has placed him in. Um, what Amen. advice would you give a Christian who is entering the field of politics, Anthony? Yeah. Stay true to the word of God. Don't deviate from uh, the straight path that he's put you on. Um, win or lose an election. If you do what's right, God will have your back. So I would say just stay true. 
you know, you're not there to make friends. You're not there to, to please people. You're there to, to do what's right and, uh, and just stay true to that. And God will open doors for you. That's true. And do you think that even some, I'm not sure even, are there a lot of Christian politicians there? Well, that's a good question. So this upcoming election, November 8th, which it is so important, everybody get out and vote. If every Christian, 25 million Christians in this nation got out and vote, this nation would change today. So this upcoming election, uh, I believe Carrie Lake is going to win, and I think she'll be she'll be an absolute rock star when it comes to pushing through good conservative legislation that we know as Christians are the mm-hmm. right thing to do. Um, I, 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 I also want to say that just there are two pastors running in this election. Uh, I, they're running for the state house. Uh, one's a Calvary pastor, and one is, I think, a non-denominational pastor down in Benson. Yeah, we've got a pastor uh, uh, from Calvary Church in Globe, I think it is, and another pastor in Benson Mm -hmm. that is running for election. And it's fantastic uh, to see these guys rising up. Church is awakening. We need a lot more uh, to be awakened, and we need a lot more aggression uh, from the church into our society and into into government. Uh, Lance Walnaut once said, you know, the reason why government's so evil, why politics is so evil, um, is because Christians don't get involved. And uh, so we need to get involved and we need to, we need to turn this, this nation around and, and put it on the course God has destined it to be on. Amen. Anthony, how can church, churches get involved? Churches can get involved a number of ways. Get involved in your, in your, in your, in your Republican Party. If you're an independent, um, get involved in the Republican Party. You know, the Republican Party is not our answer, um, but they align most with the word of God. The only answer to our nation right now, it it is get out and vote, but it also is a a third great awakening. Uh, Jesus Christ is the only answer for our nation, but he gives that he's partnered with us to get out there and, and get involved. Get involved in in your republic in, in a Republican in your area, um, you know, and, and get involved in their campaign. If you can't walk, phone call. If you can't phone call, um, uh, donate money or do all three. But you know, I heard Charlie Kirk say yesterday on the radio: if you're not out there sweating, tired uh, by helping a candidate, then not doing enough. And, you know, it is do or die in our nation. We all feel it. We all know it. So we've got to get out, get out of our lethargy and we have got to get out and be involved and, and, and make sure you vote, you register to vote, go on myvotekern.com. You can click on that link if you don't uh, and you can register there to vote. How can churches be more proactive other than just voting? Who do they, who do they contact? Yes. Contact the Republican party. I don't have that number in front of me, but it's, uh, I'm not sure if we got Marina, but um, Arizona Republican. Yeah. Arizona Republican party. If you Google it, uh, ask them how to get involved. They will direct you to get involved. Great. I saw on your website, our past president, Donald Trump, endorsed you, as you mentioned earlier in the radio interview, and he endorsed you on November 29th of last year. How did this happen? Yeah, that's a great question. So it happened, actually, it started in July. Um, There was a senator that was in my district, Paul Boyer, who had uh, voted, you know, he's a, he's a, a decent guy, but he voted a lot with the Democrat Party. And uh, with the election integrity issue that we all battled, you know, back in 2020 and 2021, um, this particular senator did not uh, agree with that the election was stolen. He did not agree that, you know, there was any shenanigans that went on when, you know, most of the country can see the videos, see the evidence and, and see what happened anyway. So July of 2021, President Trump saw that I was running against this guy. And uh, and he 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 gave me a mention. Then in um, around October, I got a call from the Trump campaign and they said they were going to endorse me and wanted to talk to me a little bit. And uh, and so that's how that happened. 
uh, with a with a full endorsement by President Trump uh, back in in November. So that was uh, it. Just it boosted uh, our campaign, and uh, you know every Trump endorsed candidate in Arizona got elect, uh, won their primaries, and now we're we're I, I I'm almost confident, if not confident, that we will all win our general election uh, if everybody gets out to vote. Well, I'm so glad that God made this happen through these individuals who he used to have uh, our past president, Donald Trump, endorse your endorse you. I saw pictures of you and him together. If you can remember, what did you both discuss when you first met him? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So the first time I met Donald Trump, I've now met him three times in person. I actually just met him last Sunday again or, or talked with him a little bit last Sunday. When he was here in town in Mesa, uh, but the first time I met him was in, in January, and I spoke at that rally. That video is on my website if people want to know, you know, what I who I am and what I believe. Uh, so when I met him, um, uh, it was just you know kind of surreal. Uh, he is one of the most personable people you will ever meet. He asked me about my race. He asked me about some candidates. Uh, he, my wife at the time, she was not on the Secret Service list to meet him. And I kept telling the staff, I said, look, my wife came here to Florence. Uh, she wants to meet Donald Trump. Is there any way we can make it happen? And they said, no, no, she's not on the list. Well, when I got to President Trump, I said, uh, yeah, you know, I shook his hand. And I said, my wife really wants to meet you. She's out in the crowd. And, uh, and, and, but, but they're not letting her come back. And he said, go, let him go get his wife. That's all he said. So he let me go back mm -hmm. and get my wife. Uh, I came back about 20 minutes later. Then we talked a little bit about my race. He asked me about some Republican candidates. I said, eh, I'm not sure about that person. I'm not sure about that person. He actually let me go with, to his speech and change his speech. This was the wow. first time I met this guy. I know. And it was <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it was the first time I met the President of the United States. He said, whatever Anthony Kern wants to change in my speech, make sure he does. So that's what we talked about. It was just kind of, it was an awesome experience. That's great. The next election is around the corner, November 8th, 2022. On your website, I read the issues that you support. For example, you mentioned that honest and transparent elections are paramount to our nation's future. You want to ensure that it is easy to vote and hard to cheat. Also, you want to protect Arizona families. For example, parents should have the right to decide where their children attend school. You said that you will always be pro-life, which is great because it is another biblical value. Your website also mentions that you support the freedom to practice our chosen religion in America and should be protected at all costs. Can you please explain what religious protection would look like for Christians? Yeah, religious protection of uh, Christians. If so, if you look back at 2020 when the COVID pandemic hit, there was a huge push to shut the churches down. Uh, mm -hmm. Dependent upon the governor of each state. If you look at California, the churches in California had to actually sue Gavin Newsom to uh, to to keep their churches open. Here in Arizona, uh, we were fighting. We weren't really fighting Governor Ducey because he did allow them to to stay open per the Constitution. But they 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 definitely suggested that maybe you you do services outside um, and, and all that. So so our our government back in 2020 was decent. But I think there's a lot more we can do to ensure that churches remain open should this ever happen again. Uh, as far as individual religious freedom. A person should not be afraid to open a Bible in, 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 a, in a public school and, and read it to their class. Um, you know, they're opening uh, rotten, foul, sexual, perverse books right mm -hmm. now. But God forbid a teacher would a teacher would mention Jesus Christ in their classroom. The, 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 you know, the government would go uh, apoplectic. So, uh you know, just individuals, you should not have, you should not be afraid to post the 10 commandments in your cubicle at work. You should not have the, uh, have the fear of, uh, you know, of talking about Jesus Christ in the public sector. 
or putting up a nativity scene at Christmas. So that's religious freedom. That's what we were founded on. Uh, the Ten Commandments is still posted at the United States Supreme Court. If you go to Washington, D.C., there's there is there is uh, scripture after scripture after scripture on our memorials and our, um, you know, our government buildings. But yet the left and the, the media has done has done a good job in putting the fear of, oh, you can't talk about Jesus. You can talk about sexual, uh, you know, transgender, but you can't talk about Jesus. So that's what I mean by religious freedom. Some Christians want to know, and I know you mentioned that we should not be afraid to share our faith in the schools or at the work in the workplace. Some Christians want to know, can they share their faith in the workplace? Absolutely. Absolutely. They can. They might come back with a little pushback. They might, you know, but, but if, again, you know, I'll give you a little story. Back in the 90s, um, I had seen, I used to work for the city of Phoenix. And I saw, they used to have a newsletter that went out to all of their 10 to 15,000 employees. Um, police, fire, every government, every city of Phoenix employee. Um, so I've seen a, a small advertisement for a, a gay and, le- gay and lesbian, um, city of Phoenix Gay and Lesbian Association was having a meeting and I saw that and I thought, okay, this little thing rose up inside me. And, um, and I said, I'm going to start my own city of Phoenix employees for Christ. So I contacted the newsletter and I said, I want to have a Bible study at the, at the old city hall. And it's going to be on this date at this time. It's called the City of Phoenix Employees for Christ, and I had it put in the in the in, in the uh, in the newsletter. Yeah, so I was expecting them to say no, uh, but they didn't, which made me happy. I put it in the newsletter. The very first meeting we had, we had people from the police department, the mayor's office, the city council, all attending this Bible study, wow. and twenty five years. This was back in the in the mid nineties. 25 years later, that City of Phoenix Employees for Christ is still going on. Right now, every department has a Bible study once a month. And and it was all started because, you know, I wasn't afraid to stand up at my workplace and, and, and preach Jesus. So I would say, do not be afraid. Do it. See what happens. There are If you do come up with a challenge, you know, challenge them. Say, no, I have a right as an individual. My faith is important to me. Um, you know, and I equate it with the, the, you know, the gay, the homosexual movement. They're not afraid to flaunt their Mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Why should we not be afraid? We should not be afraid to tell people about Jesus. Um, because really that's what the world needs. And I'm not, I'm not disparaging the homosexual person need to be saved, uh, and turn their lifestyle around. But we, as Christians, we have the truth. We should never be afraid to stand up for truth uh, and not be shut down by our society. Amen. I know there's more issues that you support, Anthony, but is there one issue more of a priority than the others that you will begin to be working on right away when you get reelected on November 8th? If so, which one and why? Yeah, right. Well, there's actually <laughs> several, but uh, I'll give you the right. I'll give you the top three. One is our kids. We gotta protect our kids. So mm-hmm. the ESA action empowerment uh, scholarship and scholarship savings account um, that has got to be funded, and the parents are, and will have the to move their choice. I I I would say. Get your kids out of public school. You take advantage of this ESA account, your ESA account, and and, uh, and homeschool your kids if you can, or put your kids in a homeschool atmosphere or a Christian school. I know Charlie Kirk at Turning Point USA is starting Christian schools through Dream, Dream City. Um, that's that's a priority. Or the kids, immigration is a huge priority. Uh, election integrity is a huge priority. So I mean, there's so many huge priorities. But we're going to hit the ground running. We're already moving on legislation to make sure our, le- our elections are secure, um, our, every, our border is secure, and our kids are, are not being taught 
the perversion and the nonsense that are is being taught in our public school system at, at this time. Amen. How can people get a hold of you, Anthony? Is it hard to get a hold of politicians? No. Go through my website. There is a phone number. There is a volunteer form. If you want a yard sign to put in, if you want to help us walk a neighborhood, uh, it's not hard to get, get a hold of politicians. It might be hard to get, get the cell number, but if you walk once or twice and I get to know you a little bit, I'd, I'm more than happy to give you my cell number. Uh, but there is a phone number that goes to my cell uh, that is on my website. So if you have a question, feel free to call me, uh, leave a text message, and, and I'll get it. But it's not hard to get a hold, a hold of politicians at all. Anthony, I read that in the past you were a member of the Arizona House of Representatives representing District 20, and you began your office position on January 5th, 2015, and then you left office in 2021. However, you will be on the ballot in the general election on November 8th, which is around the corner and running for election to the Arizona State Senate to represent District 27th or 27. What has the Lord put in your heart to do if you get reelected that may be different from what you have done in the past? So in the past, you know, it was all new. Uh, when I first went into office in 2015, it was it was all new. So I didn't really know. If you look at the scripture, Isaiah 22, 22, the key of David is, is, is upon your, sh- whatever you open will be open. Whatever you shut will be shut. God has laid the key of government. That means God, that God has given us the governmental authority to legislate his word into our government and into our nation. And we all know, you know, people say, well, you can't legislate morality. I, I disagree with that. Mm-hmm. You absolutely can legislate morality. Just as like, just as well as you can legislate immorality. Exactly. And so, you know, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. So Amen. we. The difference now, uh, compared to seven, eight years ago, is um, I know now what is behind the scenes. I know I'm more. Um, I've got more of a fight in me for God's truth. Not that I didn't have it before. But because of where we're headed as a nation, Mm -hmm. Trump did a really good job exposing the enemy. And we're headed very, very quickly down a slippery slope of annihilation, really, of destruction of a good nation. And so I am in to fight like never before to to ensure God's word is heard in our in the halls of our state government, in the halls of Congress. And I will stand for truth and righteousness. um, uh, And I know. There are several people that will stand for truth and righteousness when we get in. So I think it's going to be a fantastic session. Uh, become January, I, I really believe Arizona is the tip of the spear. We're going to set the example for other states to follow on turning this tide around and seeing our nation fulfill its destiny that God intended for us. Thank you so much, Anthony, for being on Faith City Outreach to share your testimony and to share what God has done in the past in your life and how he's going to be using you in the future. May God bless you in the next election on November 8th and may his perfect will be done in your life and in your ministry. And may God bless your family too. Thank you, Marina. I appreciate it. God bless you for all you do. We need, we need everybody out there to come together, vote on November 8th, vote Anthony Kern. My website is votekern.com. God bless you and all you do. Thank you, Marina. You're welcome. God bless. Amen. Thank you for listening to Global Gospel Worship Radio with Marina Maria, where all the nations praise the Lord with Christian international music and radio programs. For more information about our radio ministry, please go to globalgospelworshipradio.org. And now we'd like to bless you with this scripture from Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thanks for listening.